So you're telling us about the inspection that's happening. Could you just elaborate a bit more on that, the two ladies that came down? Yeah, from Huntington Local Council. Obviously, they've had so many letters from locals. They said they had uh, 97. Please, can you stop writing? Because we have to respond to them all and we don't have time to investigate. Right. Um, they come down here, done a check. Obviously, we've had the fire brigade down here as well. The highways, we're all compliant with everyone. Okay. So in turn, they then need to do an inspection on MBRA because because of all the issues that have been raised. But what we have noticed is an increase of various different contractors going in, workmen going around. Oh, okay. It's a mass tidy up, you know, yeah. there's a flurry of activity. Absolutely. So is that what you're noticing, the different vans going in and out? Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Right. And some of them have stopped and spoken to us because they don't always know where they're going. I was going to say, so that it, it could be a shock for a lot of workmen that are going in there because they don't know what it is, obviously. Yeah, and you know, they've got a hand over their phones, they've yeah. got to sign the Secrecy Act. How do people keep going in there when you've got these dogs who literally never go outside? You've probably got dogs at home, you wouldn't do that. They come into work, you're having a bad day, there's dogs barking, clambering for love, love and affection, yeah, yeah. and they're, got, they're annoyed with them. You know, and if you think a thousand dogs all wanting attention, yeah, yeah. maybe there's frustration that you can't give them each individual love that they're entitled to. You're going to take us down um, round the side. I have sort of been dreading this actually because of what I've I've heard about it. But um, let's go and have a look. Okay. So this is the bit you can't cross. So this is the twenty. You can't hear them. Yeah. This is the twenty meters here. We used obviously to exit here. So it gets weathered. It's not ideal. And it's a sixty miles per hour road. Right. Definitely. Although they've put advisory signs up, it's not actually legally binding. Right. So, although it's 30, 40, it doesn't. Yeah. So this land here, this doesn't belong then to. It doesn't belong to them. No, this is farmland owned by some Mormons. They're right. absolutely fine with oh, us using right. the land. They've come down. We've spoken to them. Um, NBR owned the ditch. They own the ditch. So the injunction is we're not allowed in that ditch. Right. Um, it gets a bit more prominent as you go up. Um, we will sometimes have the security and escort you down. Right. Um, so they're told to monitor anyone. I don't know what on earth they think they're going to do. This is more intimidation, do you think? Yeah. yeah. So these ribbons, what are they there for? Uh, for peace. Right, yeah, it's an animal rights thing, I'm told. So this is the closest shed. That is their light. Oh my God, you can hear them, can't you? Do they ever come out? No. Never. No, the media are state that they do. Good practice says they're supposed to have 20 minutes a day of recreational time. So what about daylight? Well, this shed has these small bathroom windows. Right. I mean, there's no sunlight streaming through there. You know, this is their life in a concrete, barren factory. So there could be sort of anything between three to four hundred dogs right. in there. I think I tell you what, I think I think we should take the time to actually have a listen to the animals that don't ever come out and see see proper daylight. So this is their world, this is their life. Um, they have no daylight, they have no love, there's no human contact. Um, and this is it, this is what they're bred for until they're taken away. It makes me feel physically sick, absolutely physically sick. I mean, I'm somebody who, um, I have always had animals and I lost my two dogs the last year and um, you know, they get you through life, your animals, when there are dark times, you know. Um, 
and yet here this could be a bottle of shampoo in there it's a commodity um, and it's just heartbreaking and I, I, I think the more people that know about this the more that we can spread the word then the more pressure we can put on these barbaric companies they are they're barbaric and and ultimately it's about money it's always about money you know you can wrap it up any way you like it's saving lives it's helping no it's really just about money as they say follow follow the cash So can I ask you what your message would be to the people that go in here every day, day in, day out and work here? I implore you please, just reconsider what you've been doing. Some of you have been working here a number of years. You may have become institutionalised to these criers, to these barks. Some of you are going to have companion animals. There's no way that you would leave them inside to, to fester in their own mess for all of their lives. Some of you have got beagles that you've rehomed from here. Just because you're looking after that one, it doesn't for mean you can forsake, you know, all these other thousand beagles. Please leave this company. There's a whistleblower number. You know, please don't take your anger and frustration out on these dogs. We have heard you shout at them. Just please, please reconsider your actions here. There's plenty of literature for you to read. You don't need to be brainwashed by the fact that these dogs are champions, that they are helping medical and veterinary progression. It's really not the case. This industry has not had a public or scientific review since 1906. There is a reason for that. You can't be wired right if you're okay with that. You guys put your music on loud in your cars to drown their barks out. You won't be able to drown your conscience out when you're on your deathbed. That's the sound of dogs wanting a life. They want to put their feet on the grass, smell the fresh air. What you do is very wrong here. So the, these demonstrations are peaceful. So why all this security? The vivisection industry is trying their hardest, MBR, their damn hardest to discredit us right. and compare us to previous campaigns with heavier tactics. Right. You know, we're family friendly right. here, we have children here. I see, yeah. You know, we've got our court papers and the case law that they quote is from Animal Liberation Front um, and Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty, Shack. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the legal president's been set right up here. We're right down here. Yeah. You know, they're close clutching at straws, all the court cases have been chucked out it's all or for found show, not guilty. Then, isn't it? It's just it really show. is. So know. really what we're watching here is theatre, isn't it? An expensive theatre yeah. at the expense of extreme cruelty. Because they get you like you said, they get paid well, the security. Absolutely, you know, if you think usually SIA badge holders would get nine to eleven pounds an hour, right. they're getting eighteen pounds an hour, maybe cash retainers. They have more staff on demo days. Um, you know, they've told us we didn't know what we was turning up for, but I'm getting five hundred pounds for the twelve hour shift. Yeah. So, you know, these guys don't want to be here. Many of them said, you know, I have a nice job three days a week. Yeah. My boss sends me here two days. I think they're being exploited. Many of them are Indian or Bangladeshian. English is their second language. They haven't got to interact with people too much, yeah. you know, and they're just trying to pay their bills and support their families. And, you know, we have offered, um, you know, alternative employment with unicorn recruitment. Yeah. Um, so we have tried to cover all bases, not saying what you're doing is bad, you must leave, because yeah. it's like with, say, vegans with farmers. You can't just say what you're doing is disgusting, closed yeah. down. Yeah. People need a livelihood. Sure. So yeah. it's about offering those alternatives, alternatives. and yeah. not just demonising people who are trying to support their families. Do you know what I feel? I feel quite physically sick. I, do, I feel quite... I, I do, I feel quite physically sick. I'm like burning in my stomach listening to that. And, and, and the way it goes, it heightens, doesn't it? It heightens and now we've gone 
quiet again. I mean, I can't. I'm not, I couldn't walk around there all day. I can barely do it no. now. I think, can we? Yeah. Oh, my God. Do you know, that's just horrendous. It's too much. But at the same time, it also re-energises you as to why you're yeah. here and not going. And what is our suffering yeah. compared to what those dogs experience? So I did go around the side and you must have heard all, all the dogs squealing and barking and I mean the crescendo of noise was uh, made me feel actually physically sick. Um, you know we're supposed to be um, a nation of animal lovers. Now this is the last, the last place open in this country that's breeding dogs for vivisection. We really need this place shut down and these people are not going to go until it's shut down. Um, I mean, I so admire them. So for me, during the really dark times of my life, my dogs have got me through it. I couldn't be without animals. And when you think about in society how we use animals, we have guide dogs, we have dogs that go into buildings to sniff out explosives, we have police dogs, you know, we're giving these dogs medals for their bravery. Um, the attachment that we have with animals is, is just incredible. Um, I always view them like, they're like angels on earth, they're earth angels. They're here to make our lives a little better, or should I say a lot better. Um, and they just make everything in our lives better just by being with us. These people that stay here day in, day out, they are absolutely incredible and we need to support them uh, as much as we can. So we will put the links below and if you can support in any way, if you can come down for an hour, for two hours, for a day, I mean, it's very family friendly as well. So, you know, you can bring your kids down, people do. This is a protest which is non-violent. Um, they are just going to remain here steadfast uh, until this place is shut. But I do want to say a message to those that work here. Uh, I don't know how you look at yourselves uh, in the mirror. I really don't. I look forward to coming down here when, it, when it's closed and that would be a fantastic day for those that have given up their lives, their day-to-day -day lives, to see that day come.